Hi, this is Vicki Heyman with the University of Wyoming Weston County Extension. And today I'm going to show you how to use your knife and properly slice, dice, and chop your produce. So the first thing you need to do is wash your hands and wash all of your produce. Once you do that, you need a cutting board. Now this cutting board happens to have rubber grips, which is nice because it prevents it from sliding and moving. But if your cutting board does not have little grips, get a damp towel and slide it right underneath your cutting board. That will keep it steady and not move around on you. One of the first things you need is a paring knife. Now the proper way to hold the paring knife is to grip it, get that finger, your first finger, right up on the blade. And then you're ready to go. You don't want your finger out on the knife. Keep that finger on the blade. When you go to cut, I like to keep my knife tipped down. And you're gonna use a motion that is sort of a rocking motion. You're gonna go down and forward, down and forward. This may take some time to get used to, but with practice, it'll become second nature. Now there's a claw method to holding your food. And that is to keep your fingers back. So when you're slicing forward with your knife, you're gonna inch your fingers back. Keep that thumb back so, as you see, got my fingers down, my fingernails are not showing, keep them tucked up, and you're gonna want that knuckle to be your guide so you don't slice your finger. Another method we'll talk about is a tunnel method in which you're gonna hold your produce and slide your knife in and cut that way. You want it steady. Vegetables that are round will roll on you and you don't want an accident to happen. So let's take a look at some of these common vegetables and how to cut them. I've got celery. Now when I start cutting, I like to get a little bowl. And this is where I put my scraps or my trash. That way I'm not running all over the kitchen when I'm working. So for this celery, it has a nice flat edge. So I like to put it down and that way it doesn't move on me get my hands in my claw motion, got my knife down, it's close to the vegetable, and I'm gonna go down and forward. I pull it up, down and forward. It's a nice little rocking motion. I can go super thin, and I can go relatively thick. Now, I'm not in a speed contest. I know chefs on TV operate very fast, but this isn't a rush job. So just do it as you like. Again, down, forward, rocking motion. Tip is still on the board. I lift the back of the knife up. See my hand placement? It's still in the same position. Now that makes a nice little slice, thin or thick. But let's do a bias cut. Let's do something a little special. Now, for the slice, my knife was at this north-south position, 12, 6 o'clock, if you re refer to it as a clock. But I'm going to move my knife, and I'm going to put it more at an angle, such as 11 o'clock. Got my tip down, and I'm going to go at a diagonal. I'm coming up, going down. Got that claw. It's just steadying my cuts. As I get close to my hand, I'm going to move it back. So as you can see, now I have some nice diagonal cuts. They're just a little more fun and decorative. So you can do this with carrots also, a number of vegetables. So give the diagonal cut a try. Now let's take a look at this cucumber. Again, it's big. It's too much for me to handle, so I'm going to use a tunnel. I've wrapped both uh, sides of this cucumber with my hands, and I'm going to slice it in half. And then I'm just going to come forward. Now that I have a nice flat surface, I'll turn it over. 
Again, I'm going to make some nice half moons. I've got my knife held appropriately. I put the tip down on the board and I'm going to go a nice slow rocking motion. Come up, go down and forward, up, down and forward. Keep my fingers, uh-oh, I saw my nails. Get them back in my claw position. It's easy to get sidetracked, so keep an eye on your hands. Slide on back and see we've developed some very pretty, nice half moon slices. And that's all there is to it. Now, if this was a carrot, for example, one thing I would do, because a carrot, like the cucumber, is very round. I like to take and just do a small cut. Watch your fingers. You don't want to get them in the way. And then, if it's a round carrot, I have a nice, flat, smooth surface. So then I can work away and make different types of cuts. And the carrot is stable, doesn't roll around. Let's try the potato. Again, the potato can be wobbly, so I'm going to use the tunnel. I'm going to start back here, and I'm going to go forward and slice it in half. Drag it out. I'm going to flip my potato over. Now, I think I'll do french fries, so let's practice this again. I'm going to put my hands around the edge of the knife. Again, hold your knife properly. I'm going to slice down. I'm going to come in, make another even cut, slice down. Come in, make another even cut, slice down. Now, to help show you how this looks, I have several slices that look like this. I'm going to put them together. Now, I don't want the skin on my potato or french fry. So I can just slice it off just like that. I'm going to even up the ends, so I'm just going to cut down. Again, get your point down, slice through. Now these potatoes are still kind of thick, so I can take and just slice now I have sticks that remind me of french fries. If that's what you want, you stop there. But let's say I want to dice the potatoes. I'm going to put them in a salad. So again, I just go up and down, up and down. Keep that claw. Work your way back. And try to eyeball. You want nice, even dice. And that's all there is to it with the potato. Many times people will ask me about green peppers. There are a variety of ways to cut a green pepper. But I'm going to show you one method that I like. Now, your green pepper might be a little unsteady. That's okay. I like to take my knife and the first thing I'm going to do is start at the top and I'm going to go down and around. I'll show you this. I've got my knife in the proper and then I'm just going to slice nice and down. Now what that does is that leaves me with a nice piece of pepper. Most of the white is gone, but if some of it isn't, I'm just going to take it off. Again, I'll show you one more time. And you do this with all four sides. So then I'm going to take and slice on down and around. As you see, I've gotten rid of most of the white and I don't even have any seeds. Once I do that, pretty much what you're left with is the shell and you just throw it away. Now, on a pepper, you have the soft inner side and you've got the skin, which is more tough. I like to keep the tougher skin on the cutting board. I'm just going to dice this. Again, I've got my knife down, 
and I'm just going to make thin slices. Go through, forward. I'm going to move it over. Got my hands in the right position. You want that claw so that you do not cut your fingers. You can make these extremely fine. This is great for stir fries. Now, if you want strips, you're done. Again, you can go back and dice it or mince it. A mince is a real small dice. As you see, I've got the knife down. I'm coming up and I'm rocking forward. Again, keep that claw. Sometimes I get a little lax in my claw. But as you practice, you'll be able to keep your hand in that claw shape. Another product that we might try to cut is an onion. So let's see what you do with an onion. Now I've washed this onion. Like all produce, it needs washed, even though it has skin on it. Because if you don't, you're gonna take that dirt and pathogens and slice through the skin all the way through the onion. And that carries over into your product or your salad, whatever you're making. Now, the onion again is round, but before I start, I am going to cut off the end. Now, I've left the root, but I have a flat surface. So, here we go. I'm going to cut it in half. If, if my hands if the onion's small enough, I can use the tunnel. So let's see if I can use the tunnel on this onion. Sometimes the onions are too big and I can't get my hands around it to form a tunnel. Now, I have left part of the root end intact. And that's because I don't want the onion to come apart on me as I'm preparing it. So peel off the skin. Now, if I'm just doing nice slices, I'm ready to go. So if I do some thin slices, here we go. And they're ready for salads or stir fry, whatever you're working on. Might be a fajita. But let's say I want to dice. So get your claw. And this onion is rounded. So keep your knife approximately in the same shape as the onion. So I'm going to angle my knife. I'm going to slice it just a little bit. And I'm going to go either close together or far apart, depending on how thick I want my dice to be. Just work your way all the way around. I am not cutting through the root end. I'm going up to the root end. I want this onion to stay together. Okay, so if you see, I can still pick up the onion. Oh, I lost a little side, but that's okay. Now I'm going to take and I'm going to do my little dice. If I want a real small dice, I've got my hands in proper position. I'm going to go down and forward, down and forward. And as you can see, the onion is already in little squares. There's no need to cut horizontal like some people recommend. Now, if you want a bigger dice, I'm just going to cut it wider. So as you see, this is wide, and it makes a bigger dice compared to this small dice. So again, it's all about control and what you want. Now, let's go on to garlic. This is a bulb of garlic. All I need is a clove. So I've pulled off a clove, just like the onion, I washed it. There's a little root end that was attached. I am going to lay this on its side, and I'm going to cut that little piece off. Now, once I do that, I'm going to smash this garlic. All I do is take my fist and push down on my knife. 
you can peel the garlic easily that way. Just give it a tug and the skin should come off. Once the skin comes off, I'm going to take, and it's really hard with such a small item, but I'm going to cut some slices, sort of like I did with the onion, and I'm just going to go in there. Now, I've got my knife point down, get my position correct, keep my fingers turned under for that claw, and I'm just going to very carefully push that forward. Now I have a nice little chop. But let's say I want to mince it. I can do a rocking motion and sometimes what I do with this is I keep my point down and I like to put my hand there and I just rock it around. Now I've got a small little mince and if you want it even finer you just keep working your knife across and you'll have minced garlic. One other item I'd like to show you is shredding cabbage. This could also work with lettuce. In the cabbage, there's a core. You want to be sure that core is partially removed. It's like the onion. It holds together all the leaves. Now for me, this cabbage is a little bit too big. So I'm going to slice it again. So I like to work through the core. Keep your hands out of the way and I'm going to make it into a smaller wedge. That core is right here. Now all I'm going to do is I'm going to get my claw, I've got my knife in position, and I'm just going to go really small pieces. Now this one, my outer leaf wants to fall apart. Sometimes you just need to take it off. Otherwise, I'm going to go extremely fine. I might be making coleslaw. People don't like to have a, a big shred with their coleslaw. Now, some of these pieces might be a little big. Again, I'm just going to get my fingers, go through, dice it up just a little bit more fine. So with practice, you can make really fine shreds and it makes for a really nice cut. Remember, it's really important to hold your knife properly. Grab, you're gonna put your point down, you're gonna go forward as you go down. So it's that rocking motion. I hope you've enjoyed these tips for slicing and cubing and dicing. Enjoy cutting, it gets better with practice. Thank you.